it's Matthew here in sweet Jamaica. I'm inside the treehouse right now at Prince Valley. It's an awesome place to stay. And I have been getting some questions about travel gear, what to bring to Jamaica. So I thought it might be a good idea if I actually break down just some of my most essential overall travel items. These are items that pretty much never leave my backpack. They're always there, whether it's for a big international trip for two months in Indonesia, whether it's for a shoot on just a two or three week trip to Jamaica, or whether it's even just going away for a weekend in Canada or wherever I am. So this is just some travel essentials that have helped me out for years and years and Hope you enjoy. I'll link everything below to uh, an Amazon store if you end up buying it with the link. I get a small commission and it does not affect your price at all. And these are the cheapest prices that I've found for this item or at least something very similar. So yeah, check the treehouse vibes. This is a huge mango tree <laughs> growing in the space. Just amazing. You can see my full tour of the property with Bobby, the owner. Very cool guy. Um, but yeah, let's get into it. So, first thing first, I would say, would be my Leatherman Wave, which my dad gave to me, I think 10 years ago. So big up to my dad. Pretty sure these have a lifetime guarantee. And you know, there's all different types of Leatherman or multi-tools. So maybe you don't need this one specifically, but I think these, yeah, they have such a good guarantee and they're really tough. So, I'll try to do this one-handed here. Let's see how successful I am. But it's got some very useful stuff on it. So, you know, you got some serious pliers. You can tell that it's pretty well used. And a whole bunch of other tools on the side. You've got even some place where you can measure from if you need to do some measurements during a little construction project or whatever else you'd have to do. So you've got your regular knife and it does lock on this little thing here, so I find that's a good thing to have with a knife. There's your file. I, you know, you can use it for gripping skateboards or maybe you need to pretty up your nails. I don't know, whatever else is good for. You got that right there, so that's on the one side of the knife. On the other side, you got this real nice saw. It's actually very sharp. You can get through some pretty hardcore, tough wood with that. And on the other side, there's another saw, it's kind of stuck right now. This thing, I left it in Indonesia for three years during the pandemic and it did get kind of rusted out. So it probably needs a good, just a good cleaning, but there's two saws in there. One of sort of more thicker, sharper one and another thinner one. Um, and then you also have tools on the inside here. Very useful stuff, so you can just whip these out. So you can see here, a couple different uh, different tools, so you've got your flat blade, kind of screwdriver, or even as a chisel type thing. And you can put that away. And then you've even got a very fine little screwdriver there. So very helpful for a bunch of different applications. There's actually some scissors in there too. And again, because it didn't get used for three years, it's a little stuck right now. So there is a little pair of scissors in there. Or maybe it's all gummed up because I'm pretty sure I've used it for herb chopping before. So a bunch of tools there. And then on the opposite side, there's another screwdriver in there where you got a little Phillips head. And then there's another sort of claw-like tool in there. So you can loosen this up um, with this sort of star driver. So I've got to take this thing apart and clean it up because obviously I probably should have done that before. But still, it's holding up amazing. And it was three years rusting away by in a surf bag by the ocean, so you can still see how basically prime that it is. So yeah, I'm sure that's pretty normal. A lot of people will carry a multi-tool while traveling. Just make sure you do get used to taking out of your backpack and putting it in your checked luggage, because obviously TSA doesn't like it when you fly with knives and tools. Surprise, surprise. So pack that one up safely. Make sure your brain is working to remember that every time. Luckily, I've done so many trips that I remember, I just automatically know where to take it out and, and when to put it back. So there you go. So next is something that is maybe a little more unusual for people. Uh, this is just a, they call it a massage ball. I forget what brand this is. And I think it doesn't even really matter what brand it is. I have another one I bought on Amazon that's a little larger that I, I do like as well. But it is super, super useful. So I've had some pretty bad back injuries in the past and luckily I've been able to overcome that mainly thanks to acupuncture. Saved my back. 
But every once in a while, I did get a sort of flare up of back issues, especially when spending a lot of time in the car or the plane. And this ball saved me. So I gotta thank Shano, one of my best friends uh, from Canada. We've been friends since grade one. He got me onto rolling with the massage ball. So as a guy, we tend to get a lot of back issues that comes from tight hips actually. So I was trying to get back massages and stretch out my back and do yoga and, and hot tubs and all this stuff and it would work okay, but it never really solved the problem until Sean made me realize that if I roll out my hips and almost around my butt, it opens up all that hip area, which in turn opens up the back area. So I've been rolling regularly for probably 10 years now, and I have not had back pain, mm, yeah, probably in a good eight years. So it's completely saved me. So yeah, this one is quite firm. I find the softer ones uh, don't really work that well for me but you just simply just put this on the ground, you lie down and you may look like kind of a weirdo grinding your hips around and rolling out your lower back or around your butt muscles or kind of on your side, really getting into those hips. But if you do this for even a few minutes a night, I can almost guarantee that you will see a huge improvement, if not a complete improvement in your back issues. You know, if you've had some sort of, uh, to type of back issues that I have obviously it's not going to solve everything but for traveling if you've had a long hike if you've been sitting in a plane or sitting in a car for a long time for me this really saves the day and you can also use it for rolling out your shoulders or, or upper back after surfing a lot if you've put in a lot of time in the water you can just put it against the wall roll out your arms um, you can roll out your chest you can roll out your neck your upper back even just having the ball like this and, and rubbing it anywhere that is um, feeling tight, I find it very helpful. So it's so magical, it's so light. And who knows, maybe you met a friendly dog and you wanna play fetch and you wanna make friends with this dog. Well, there you go, you got a ball to play fetch with Fido. All right, next up we have, it's a pretty normal one that probably a lot of people travel with, but it is a Kindle. Now, I know it is nice to have a physical book to read, but obviously you can fit so many different books on this. The price is, I think, maybe just around 100 bucks. I got this years ago. It's pretty dinged up, as you can see. But this is always in my backpack. It's so thin, even compared to a book, and it's very easy to use. It syncs up. Once you buy a book on here, it's there for life. Having a whole library in your pocket is just amazing. So... I do listen to a lot of audiobooks, but I love having this around to try and spend some more time reading and less time scrolling. So I can't recommend having a, uh, a Kindle enough or whatever other e-reader you want to use. Maybe there's better ones, but I've just found this to be nice and simple. I've had this for a good six years, I think. Still holding up very, very well. And what books do I have on here? Let's see. We got Roughing It in the Bush, Daily Stoic. Oh, that's a good one. Um, University of Berkshire Hathaway, The Dead Yard, that's a pretty crazy one about Jamaica stuff, Anti-Fragile by Nassim Taleb, that's probably my favorite author of all time, War of Art, Through Blood and Sweat, that's a book about uh, the invasion of Sicily, not the invasion of Sicily, uh, the liberation of Sicily by uh, Canada and um, European forces that I did a documentary on about 10 years ago. Old Man in the Sea, Psychology of Persuasion, John McPhee, a book about just oranges, which is mind-blowing. So anyway, lots of different titles, and you can fit them all. All right, next up, we have some more tech stuff. Now, to be clear, I'm not this minimalist packer. I'm not a backpacker fitting everything into one small backpack. I'm usually traveling with camera gear. If I'm not traveling with camera gear, I usually have a surfboard or at least a skateboard, and then sometimes I'm traveling with all of that. So if you're looking for minimalist packing ideas, maybe these aren't that helpful, but I still do find this uh, an extremely useful tool and something that's essential wherever I go. And like I said, it stays in the backpack. So not all countries have good current setup for your electric needs. Oftentimes you'll just have one outlet. So I carry one of these, I guess, what do you call them? Power? power bar, but it's more of like a power block thing. I don't know what you call it. But obviously it has three USB and six additional ports. 
and it just plugs in simply to one on the back. Sometimes, well normally I do actually travel a little extension cord because sometimes you need to uh, fit this in in the right place. So even in this place, it's got a great setup, but it does just have one main power bar over there. But I just ran it off this little brown one and was able to have all my devices and batteries and camera gear charging right beside the bed. So very, very helpful. You might be able to find a smaller one, but I actually like having all six as an option. And sometimes the lights get bright on them, so I'll tape them over, but this one doesn't have any ridiculously bright lights. So very useful, whichever one you want to use. I'll, I'll link this one below. I think it came in a packet too. And it also makes a great gift because I know I have extra ones of these. If I'm staying at a place that doesn't have it and I know that other travelers would appreciate it, you know, I'll leave it for whichever guest house or Airbnb I'm at as a, just a little thank you. And then, you know, any future guest that goes to that room will get to use these. So yeah, just a win-win. They're not expensive at all. I forget how much they are, but I'll, I'll link it below and great way to travel. And everyone's traveling with a bit of tech these days, you know, at least a phone. I have a, you know, beard trimmer and obviously all my camera gear, whether that's for the drone or the GH6 or the phone, or now I'm even rocking an Apple watch. Maybe I'm going a little bit too much on the tech gear, but because it's my job, uh, yeah, definitely need one of these, but I, I recommend it for everyone. Like I said, even on a weekend trip, these are good to have. Maybe you're at some old cottage that only has one outlet, who knows? All right, next up is sleep related. And there's two things here, and they're very, very important. So, sleeping. Sometimes in other countries, things are really loud. You might have a ton of dogs barking outside. You might have a bajillion crickets or frogs that you're not used to. You might have loud-ass neighbors. You might have thunder. Uh, anyway, these are earplugs, but they're way better than the other earplugs because they're made of silicone and they mold to your ear. So they're called swimmers earplugs. Now they say you're only supposed to use them once, but come on, it's just silicone. I just throw them away once they get gross. I always travel with one in my backpack. And once these fit in your ear, compare them to the regular foam ones, you will never use the other foam ones again. You buy these normally in bigger packs, there'll be 20 inside and that'll last you a long, long, long time. And they do not cost much at all. So these are amazing for getting sleep in other places. And I can't recommend them enough. I'm a pretty good sleeper, but you know, maybe I get through the night fine, but in the morning you get a little roly poly or whatever. Get these in your ears. Woo, you're gonna sleep real good. And the secondary part about that is, I just call it the eyebrow. So yes, it looks ridiculous. And I've experimented with so many of these to find the most comfortable one. And this is it. So you have the really cheap ones and they're very small kind of flat ones, but I find they just do not cover your eyes well enough. And I've experimented with some other ones that were way bigger, but they were not very comfortable on the actual eyes. So this is the best one I've found. It's very soft. You know, you don't get sweaty in it. It covers enough that it does actually keep all, you know, or at least almost everything out of it, all light. And just allows you to give you a really good night's sleep, you know, adjustable on the back. And it's just the best one I've found. And believe me, I've tried using a lot of these. So I might look ridiculous, but I don't care. I'm just trying to sleep. I use them on the plane. I use them at home and use them while traveling. So I'll link this one below too. This one has got a very funny name. This is a uh, wow brand. Yes, this is a wow brand. Wow. All right, the good camera is getting too humid in the lens and the, the lens is getting all clouded up. So we're gonna finish this on the phone, but just a couple more items. Very important. Do you like beer? I do. Do you like to keep your beer cold or do you like to drink piss warm beer? Uh, I don't like piss warm beer, so I always have a koozie in my backpack. This is from the Blood Brothers Brewery in Toronto. I'll link them because it's really good beer, but you know, get any kind of koozie. You can maybe get five for a dollar at the thrift store or something, or you can get a nice one like this and it was only five bucks or four bucks, whatever it was, but keeps your drink ice cold. This one's awesome because it's extra grippy on the bottom and you know, it fits regular beers. It will fit a red stripe, even though it's a thicker bottle. You just got to jam it in there. But keeping a drink cold in a hot country is golden. Takes up no weight. You can even as a, use it as a little bedside table thing for change and keys and rare, rare, rare if you don't want to lose anything. So it's kind of got a double use. But in general, I just like cold beer. Brew dogs, baby. And what a cool logo. The hand with blood on it. 
just badass. But yeah, this is a, a next level koozie, really high quality. You can see it's pretty well traveled with. I wasn't joking, it is always, always in my backpack. Now last but not least, I, I can't even hear what's going on. They're so comfortable and so nice. Last but not least is the Bose Quiet Comfort. I think that's what they're called, uh, headphones. So best headphones I've ever owned. They're just amazing. They have noise canceling on them. They're super comfortable. You can buy replacements of the pads on Amazon for pretty cheap once they wear out. Super soft, great bass. But the main thing is, is that it has that noise canceling ability. So you know when you're on an airplane and things are just so loud with that crazy hum, you can turn these on and there's not even any music on. You just turn on the noise canceling part and it will cut out all those frequencies so you can just fly in peace. It's actually so crazy when you have them on. I leave them on for the whole flight. If I'm flying to Japan or something and you're in the air for 12 hours, it's just so much more calm without that constant And I normally have a really hard time sleeping on planes, but you know, this absolutely will help. And like I said, the sound quality is amazing. Now, obviously these are not the lightest headphones. You can get earbuds and they're way smaller, but to me, the dual purpose of having them be able to help you listen to music, but also help you sleep well or cut out noise is ideal. And when you pair this with the silicone ones in the morning, if you've got 20 angry dogs barking all around you, you can still sleep. It's so amazing. So these are, I don't know how much they were, $300, maybe more. Every Black Friday, it seems they have a really crazy sale on them. So maybe just wait till Black Friday and get them on the cheap. But I've had these for years. I've beat the hell out of them. They're kicking around my backpack. I've dropped them so many times and they still hold up really, really, really well. So I can't say big up to Bose enough. It's one of those moments where you're much better paying for quality than trying to cheap out. And everyone listens to music and everyone likes quality music. So in my opinion, you may as well get the best that you can. And get these Bose quiet comfort ones. So that is it. I think that's pretty much it. Oh, one more here, which is a Ifu brand. And this is just your standard charger device. But I really like this one because it shows you how much you have left in the charger. It's got a few different ports. It's got a little flashlight, as you can see, and USB as well as, uh, what's that called? Lightning bolt or I forget what it's called. Anyway, it's just super, super useful, very cheap. I think I got this as a two-in-one as well. I don't like when the power banks are really heavy and this one is just the lightest, lightest one that I've found. So yeah, very simple, very easy to use and very light and tough as well. I get, I think I get at least two full charges out of the phone to a phone with this, maybe more, so. Anyway, that is my travel gear essentials, the things that never leave my backpack. So hopefully it gave you a couple ideas. And again, like I said, I know I'm not the, the lightest traveler, but these are, items are all quite light, quite easy to fit in a backpack or a carry-on, or um, maybe that you just keep them in your, your checked luggage as well to have just in case. And I just find them so useful on every trip, whether it's for one night or two months, that's all the goods. So please check the links down below for the Amazon links. Again, if you buy with the Amazon link, I appreciate it because I get a very small commission and it doesn't cost you any more. And these are the cheapest prices that I've found for these particular products. So if you have any questions, just let me know down below. I'm happy to answer anything that you have. And if you have any travel tips for me or stuff maybe I could travel with, or maybe you have a better piece of gear than me, uh, I'm open to all suggestions. So please do comment below. Thank you very much. Thank you.